Firefighters quickly smothered a house fire that could have gotten out of control. We were there yesterday when Bernalillo County crews arrived on scene in a neighborhood near Sunset Road and Bridge Boulevard. They quickly put out the flames that started in a guest house. A spokesman for the department says it was fortunate they contained the fire before it got out of control. The best thing here is that the county fire crews got in this, knocked it down quickly so it didn't spread to other houses. Because you can see in the area that there's a lot of other buildings that are in close proximity to this building. Had uh, the fire really spread bad, uh, that, that could have been an issue. He says they're not sure what exactly caused the fire and they're looking into it. The guest house is a complete loss. Two men suspected of being involved in a deadly shooting at a party faced a judge yesterday. Albuquerque police say 19-year-olds Juan Martinez and Ryan Baca were with the shooter. Police say 17-year-old Donovan Young will be charged as an adult. Police say the teens were at a plaid party in the foothills on Wednesday. They say Young shot and killed 22-year-old Andrew Junqueria during a drug transaction. In court, the judge told Martinez and Baca their flight risks and a danger to the community. All three are charged with murder. A man is facing charges for fatally stabbing his wife after an argument. Farmington police say Steve Borella called 911 and told an operator he killed his wife and hung up. When authorities arrived on scene, they found his wife, Evelyn Borella, dead from multiple stab wounds. He told officers that he and his wife were fighting over the heat in their house before the stabbing took place. According to the Daily Times, he's being held on a half a million dollar bond. Santa Fe officials are planning on spending more than $8 million to overhaul the city's water meter reading system. The Santa Fe New Mexican reports the city's water division will replace 34,000 water meters and install and maintain a new reading system over the next decade. Officials say the city will replace about 13,000 defective devices purchased in 2004. The city's complaint against the now bankrupt Texas manufacturer of the devices is still pending. The city council approved an $8 million contract for the new meters earlier this month. Will skip school lose your license? For teen drivers, that could happen. A state senator is pushing for just that, hoping to hold more students accountable. I've heard from a lot of parents saying, you know, by the time they reach 16, uh, 15 and a half, you know, um, sometimes my hands are tied and there's, there's not a whole lot I can do. I, I Senator Brandt has introduced this bill before. This time he says it's simplified. If a student has 10 or more unexcused absences, a letter is sent home. Parents can appeal that if some of the absences were legitimate. If there's no response after 30 days, the MVD is notified and a student's driver's license could be revoked or they wouldn't get it at all if they were close to getting it. Some parents like it, while teens, not so much. The kids do need to stay in school, you know, and if they are missing school, they do need to take their, you know, their license away. And I think taking their license away isn't going to do anything. That's just another way they can't get to school. With this bill, the juvenile probation office would also be notified if those absences rack up. That way, they can look into whether or not a child may be neglected. Well, some good news for New Mexico. Teenage birth rates are dropping at an astonishing rate. Between 2012 and 2013, the state's health department says there was a 10% decrease in births for teens between the ages of 15 and 19. This is New Mexico's largest decline in the past 15 years. But New Mexico still leads the nation in teenage births between those ages. Hundreds of volunteers got into the holiday spirit, bringing baskets of food and toys along with holiday cheer to needy families in the metro area. And those who received the baskets say they can be the difference between celebrating and dreading the holidays. A long line of cars wrapped through this North Valley yard as volunteers loaded up 200 holiday gift baskets for needy families. It's just family members, community members. We all come together to, to because we all want to make a difference. I think everybody does at the end of the day. It's organized by Los Ojos de la Familia, a grassroots charity founded by a group of friends in Albuquerque. This is the fourth year they've put the baskets together. Local businesses donated goods and some families sponsored baskets weighing upwards of 60 pounds. Inside those baskets, chicken, potatoes, ham, flour, and more. It feeds, there must be five, six, maybe 10 meals in each basket. 
Those involved say it helps them get in the holiday spirit. Just to share some love and give a little back. For some families, toys are included, meaning more than just full bellies on Christmas morning. Christmas gets to happen for them, and it helps us make that happen. It's very, very well appreciated, and we love what they do. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Los Ojos de la Familia also delivered 50 baskets in Santa Fe on Friday. The group says each year the basket giveaway has grown. Well, postal service workers will be working overtime today in the holiday rush. Now, this is mail leaving and arriving in Albuquerque. The post office has hired more than 40 people here to help during the holidays, and they're working in shifts 24 hours a day. The post office expects to see a 12% increase from last year. Now, most of the holiday mailing deadlines have already passed, but if you want to check them out, head to KRQE.com. State police are investigating a shooting in Bernalillo that sent one person to the hospital. It happened at about 2 yesterday morning. SWAT officers were at a home near Athena and Richardson for several hours following that. Neighbors tell us there was a party at the home where the shooting happened. One neighbor who wants to remain anonymous says it was an intense scene for several hours. Is it had us all scared and freaked out. My mother's been you know, right outside the police lines trying to get in here since this morning. And it's just been really freaking out. I think the worst part is that I have my three children in here. Police have confirmed one person was shot and taken to the hospital. They have not released the shooters or victims' names or what condition that person is in. Well, two people caught with some stolen keepsakes from a film set got burned. According to a criminal complaint, a security guard spotted a car at a truck stop with an open trunk and hundreds of pounds of copper wire inside. APD confronted a man who was in the car, Valentin Garcia. Garcia got out and ultimately ran off while a female accomplice drove away. Police say the copper wire was stolen off a film set in Winrock Mall at the same time the Scorch Trials was shooting there. The families who lost their homes in a massive fire need your help. Donations are being accepted at Roosevelt Middle School and Manzano High School from 8 to 4 for the next three days. The flames destroyed the historic Old Mountain Lodge on Route 66 in Carnoel. The hotel had been turned into six apartments. Now nothing is left. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that fire. And Bernalillo County firefighters say a guest home in the southwest is a complete loss. A fire tore through the home at around 5 yesterday afternoon. It sits behind a house on Hooper road near sunset. Firefighters say they were able to put the fire out before it spread to nearby houses. No one was staying in the guest house at the time. BCFD is still investigating what caused the blaze. The New York City Police Department is mourning the loss of two of its own this morning after a gunman who authorities say made online threats to police officers walked up to a police cruiser and started shooting. Wendy Gillette reports. Hundreds of New York City police officers saluted an ambulance carrying one of their fallen brothers as it left a Brooklyn hospital. Police say a man identified as 28-year-old Ismail Brinsley walked up to this patrol car and shot two officers in the head, execution style, Saturday afternoon. They were quite simply assassinated, targeted for their uniform. The suspect ran to a nearby subway station where he shot and killed himself. Police say Brinsley was on the run after shooting and injuring his ex-girlfriend in Baltimore Saturday morning. They believe he posted to her Instagram account just three hours before killing the officers. The caption reads, I'm putting wings on pigs today. They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs. Shoot the police. R.I.P. Eric Garner. R.I.P. Mike Brown. This may be my final post. The shooting in Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood happened in front of a housing project just two minutes after the NYPD received a fax from Baltimore police warning them that Brinsley may be headed to New York. Every New Yorker should feel they too were attacked. Our entire city was attacked by this heinous individual. The officers were identified as 40-year-old Rafael Ramos, who leaves behind a wife and a 13-year-old son, and 32-year-old Wenjian Lu, who was married just two months ago. They were on special assignment, helping to control crime in housing projects. Wendy Gillette for CBS News, Brooklyn, New York. President Obama issued a statement early this morning condemning the killings. The head of the police union suggested there is blood on many hands. 
pointing a finger at the mayor and at protesters. Yesterday, dozens of New York City police officers turned their backs on Mayor Bill de Blasio. It happened as the mayor was heading to a press conference about the two murdered officers. De Blasio has faced criticism since a grand jury decided not to indict a white officer in the death of Eric Garner. Many saying the mayor failed to support his own police department in the aftermath. A man who bought a Purple Heart off the streets in Nevada has tracked the name engraved on it to a family here in the metro area. Leroy Babb says he got the medal from a man in Reno for $3 a couple of weeks ago. Since then, he's been searching for its owner. The medal has Freddie J. Roberts' name engraved on it. Roberts, who's from Melrose, New Mexico, was killed in the Vietnam War in 1967 when he was just 20 years old. Babb found Roberts' family in Albuquerque and thought the Purple Heart belonged to them. Turns out it's not theirs. Now the two are coming together to try and find who the medal really belongs to. Whether he was killed or whether he was wounded, it's something that belonged to him, and I think, I think the family should have it. We did a little research on our own. There is another Freddie J. Roberts who was awarded a Purple Heart in the 1950s. Bab says he's reached out to that Roberts, and it's not a match either. Some inmates' kids got a Christmas to remember. Children of inmates lined up to select a few gifts collected at the annual Christmas party hosted by MDC yesterday. They also made Christmas cards for family members unable to join them for the holidays. Even though each child walked away with their arms filled, there were tons of extra toys. So we have extra gifts left over. We had about a thousand gifts we gave away here today. We have about 1,500 toys left over, and we're going to donate those to Joy Junction, Carrie Tingley Hospital, um, the Children's Cancer Hospital, and Maya's Place. MDC says this is a way to give the kids hope and let them know they're not alone.